Nebraska. This is cattle country. Over 5 million cows are fed and marketed in the state each year. And nowhere is that more evident than at auction yards like this one in Rushville, Nebraska. So we're going to be on the Cattle are sold to the highest bidders both locally and nationally. In fact, the number one cow county is right here in Cherry County with nearly 166,000 head of cattle. It's just one example of what amounts to big business for Nebraska. The cattle industry has a $12 billion impact to the state's economy. But so far, 2019 hasn't exactly been kind to the beef industry. In March, this area was one of several in the Panhandle hit by two major winter storms. All of this during calving season. It's brought us a lot of snow, wind-driven snow. And so that's tough on the calf crop. Uh, these baby calves, if they are born during those blizzards, it's a cold, wet time for them. And especially if they're caught out in the open uh, without any shelter or wind protection. Cows were often seen trying to find shelter or protection from the storms. In cases where fencing failed, they'd sometimes end up in roads or on neighboring property. That's where they were at, was behind those bigger trees and up in here where, you know, yeah where they had some protection. Dave Howell was one of many ranchers who discovered dozens of his neighbor's cattle on his property. Howell owns and operates several hundred acres of land. He attributes the safety of his herd to a decision he made years ago, to plant windbreaks. When I fed these cattle Wednesday morning, we, uh, we closed the gate on these cattle and locked them in the corral because we knew the storm was coming. And, uh, and so it was comforting to know they were here. And when we got to them finally on Thursday, they were comfortable in here and just hungry. Eastern red cedar windbreaks have long been a favorite of farmers and ranchers out here due to their high tolerance of the elements. They also help reduce animal stress and mortality. But it took an event similar to Ulmer for landowners to turn to windbreaks. The winter of 1948 to 1949 brought with it 70 mile per hour winds 24 inches of total snowfall, and extreme cold temperatures. The result was a major loss of livestock. And, as landowner Pat Straussberger puts it, a change in ranchers' attitudes. Pretty everybody planted trees the next year. As you go along, will you plant another grove or wind break someplace where you need them, and, and uh, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna lose enough ground to shake a stick at. That's and it. in a 15 years, somebody will appreciate it. Nearly 40 years later, that lesson repeated itself to Pat's son, Mike, who now runs the ranch. You know, with the storms that we've had this spring, it was, it's particularly important to, to visit with someone about the importance of these trees and planting trees in the sand hills for livestock protection. And, and uh, with, with two back-to-back -back really tough storms, it, it was uh, the trees that are here on this ranch were crucial in, in saving multiple lives. The Straussberger family owns 7,500 acres and operates close to 10,000 with 525 cow-calf pairs. His losses during the storm, though, were minimal. He chalks that up to his windbreaks and a family tradition. My grandfather was a tree planter. My dad was a tree planter, and, and uh, it helped the wildlife, and, and it just it adds tremendous value to your to your operation. The yeah. things you do now, maybe you don't think a lot about, but but someday, you know, the next generation will say, you know what, I, I'm so thankful for what he did. Even years after the Dust Bowl of the 1930s or the blizzards of the late 40s, the benefits of windbreaks continue on. As the number of extreme weather events in Nebraska increases, the Nebraska Forest Service recommends regulators and producers revisit the role of windbreaks and shelter belts in cattle operations. For more information, visit nfs.unl.edu.